Hi everyone, I'm Yuri Taktev, the CTO of Rengal.io. I am here at React Europe and I will be doing some exclusive interviews with some of the speakers from the conference, asking them questions about things that they are doing their talks about. So here with me is Dan Abramov, uh, who spoke today about React, uh, about history of Redux and why it became successful. Hi, uh, Dan. So I want to ask you some questions to follow up on your talk. Um, one of the things that you mentioned is that it's today is actually a year since uh, you created the first version of Redux. So I was wondering, what are your hopes for the next year? It just seems like a good yeah. time to reflect on this. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't really expect Redux to become this popular. It was just an experiment for the previous talk. So I think um, like one of the the way I approached it is that I wanted to have a clear scope of the project. So I wanted to understand when it's over. And I have uh, some changes planned for Redux uh, in the next few months, but they're pretty minor. And I think that after this stage, uh, I can say that Redux itself is done. Mm -hmm. So I don't plan to like change it anymore. I'm pretty happy with it. And the rest of the progress happens in the community. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited about all the plugins that the community builds, about all the project building on top of Redux or spin-offs from Redux. There is a project called NGRX Store, which is Angular 2 version uh, uh, of Redux. There is uh, a project called Apollo Client, which builds on top of Redux, but lets adds GraphQL integration, and it's mm -hmm. built by Meteor team. So it's really cool to see people building on top of it. Uh, so I, I, I don't have any plans for Redux. I just, I'm excited to see what people build. And myself, I work on React team now. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll bring some of the ideas from Redux to React itself. But nothing specific. Just yeah. Uh, uh, do you have any? Is there any? Do you have any wish list for the community for what you hope the community might come up with in the coming year? Yeah. So uh, I'm interested in declarative data fetch and most of all because this is like the biggest uh, problem with Redux is that it doesn't offer you any declarative data fetch and solution like Relay. Mm -hmm. But Relay is really complex. Like it's a great uh, fit for really complex projects. Uh, but for smaller projects, it's uh, it can become hard to justify why you need such a large library uh, to handle uh, the simple use cases. So it would be great if there was some kind of data declarative data fetch and solution that you could use in a smaller project. And maybe if it becomes a large project, you can switch that to Relay. Mm -hmm. But this is the main area. So this actually takes my, me to my next question is, so we have a lot of talk about Redux and about Relay at this conference. How do you see the relationship between those two technologies evolving over the next yeah, so year or so? Right now, they solve different problems. Really, solves data fetch and declarative data uh, declarative data fetch. Uh, Redux solves local mutations, and Relay doesn't support them yet. So, what I see is that uh, we will. There is a great talk by Lee Barron called the Mutable App Architecture, mm -hmm. where he described a cohesive picture of how. Uh, you could use React or Component Kit as a UI layer, and something like Relay, but maybe Mutable as the data layer. And so it's it's a very interesting picture. And I think what we'll, we'll see is that uh, people will build things on top of Redux that make it closer to what Relay allows. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, the Relay team will build smaller, th will extract smaller pieces of Relay that could be uh, used in apps uh, similar to the one that's used Redux now. So I think we'll see some conversions from both sides, and hopefully, uh, eventually, we'll have some kind of solution that unites both programming models. In the shorter term, until we see more of that conversion, do you have any advice for people in terms of when, what sort of project Redux might be more appropriate for, and when they should be thinking about Relay? Yeah, I think like if you have, I mean, you can use two together. A lot of people use them together for different purposes. Like if you have a local editor of posts where like you can drop and drop different drag and drop different parts of uh, like different objects and it's a really complex flow and like you have forms and so on, it really won't happen with that. So you need some kind of local state solution. But on the other hand, if you have uh, complex nested entities that you fetch from the database and you have control over the backend, you might want to use relay for that. So I guess it comes down to how much of your data is just something that user modifies locally and somewhat how much of it 
comes from the server uh, in a prepared form. And if it, most of the data comes from the server, you might want to use Relay. If most of the data is on the client and is edited directly, you might want to use Redux. Or you can use them together if you're in a mixed situation. Mm -hmm. One of the, when I went back to developers at Triangle and I asked them what questions would you want to ask then, one of the uh, popular questions was, what are your thoughts on the different approaches to handling side effects with Redux? Because there's a lot of options, yeah. there's all of them very promising, but what, what are your go-to approaches? Yeah, so uh, it really depends on what the application is like. I think there are a few community packages that become pretty popular. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that it depends on the nature of side effects. Again, if it's just data fetch and uh, in an ideal world, you would be just using GraphQL and not mm -hmm. worrying about it at all. Uh, but in a less perfect world, uh, and if you don't want to use Relay for that, uh, there is a one cool project called Redux Observable, which mm -hmm. lets you express action creators as async uh, combinators uh, from Rx. So if your team is comfortable with Rx, if you feel good about like flat mapping streams of data that gets transformed and merged and so on, like this, if this is the way you think about uh, async, then uh, Redux Observable is the go-to solution. Uh, on the other hand, if you find it hard to think about like streams and time and how they get transformed, you might want to look at Redux Saga, which lets you uh, write the uh, asynchronous control flow mm -hmm. in a kind of synchronous manner mm -hmm. uh, with, using generators. Mm -hmm. So this is similar to async await, but more testable. Uh, like personally, I find Redux Saga easier to think about. But this is just because I don't know Rx that well, mm -hmm. and I find it hard to think about things happening in time. So Redux Saga kind of protects me from that. So your choice between those would your advice would be based on to choose between based on what the team is more comfortable yeah, with. Yeah, whatever the team is more comfortable with. And finally, what are you working on outside Redux nowadays? So I'm like my primary job is uh, I'm working on the React team. So I'm just trying to make crack better. Uh, I'm helping to remove some of the technical debt we have and to uh, work on the tooling for React. So we have React DevTools, which are really popular, mm -hmm. uh, but the way they are implemented, they reach into internal implementation details of React, and those are going to change. So I'm trying to decouple them from implementation details and help uh, implement the extensible contracts so that people can uh, write other third-party extensions that work with React and have mm -hmm. information, all the metadata of what's happening inside React without actually uh, depending on something that will break in the next version. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking to you. <laughs>